Today's lab is more of an exercise, not really an experiment. Uh, you'll see in the Google Doc uh, that I prepared uh, four diagrams for you to sit there and uh, try and understand what's going on physically. The first exercise, in fact, is for you to match up those diagrams to the textural description of what is happening in those diagrams. And this is just a warm-up exercise to get you used to the idea of diagrams. Uh, the next part will be you taking those four diagrams and uh, drawing scaled diagrams for the velocity and the acceleration for each one. And again, this is all explained in the Google Doc. The only time you're making measurements here, uh, we try and always do something you're going to be doing at home, is the, uh, the last exercise. Uh, and for that, I'm going to take the opportunity to introduce you to a piece of software. So the capstone software from pasco.com uh, is the software we use in the labs to control most of our instruments, uh, record data, and do the analysis. Uh, and since you don't have uh, sensors at home, I'm going to record the data for many labs and give you the, the capstone file so that you can do the analysis at home. So let's get this done, pasco.com. And if you come here and click uh, either here on the software or here on the downloads, doesn't really matter which, see capstone version 2.1. And you'll click here. And it's going to give you, uh, you skip all the purchase details, go down to download the free trial. Uh, this is all you'll need. There's, it never asks for anything. You don't have to put in credit cards or anything weird. Just download the free trial. Uh, you'll have to agree and you know you've all done the installations on a computer before. Uh, it works for Windows and Mac. You need a real computer, no Chromebooks. Uh, but it's a fairly robust product. It shouldn't be any difficulty at all. So once you've done that and you have it open, this is what you'll see. So I have an untitled cap, capstone files are .cap, uh, and I'm going to uh, save it. Uh, call it motion diagrams. Uh, I have a habit of capitalizing the first two most. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, motion diagrams. Why do I save it? Say I've done this before. Um, why do I save it? Immediately, it, that's always good practice, uh, especially here. Uh, the video section of this software can sometimes crash on you. So there's lots of controls here, and we'll go over them as you need to know. What we're interested in mostly is the displays, and in particular, we want to do a video analysis today. So we're going to double-click on Movie. It gives you three options. We're not capturing anything. We just want to see the movie that you saved from your uh, phones. I go here, and this is it for me. My little yellow ball is in the video, uh, and I can run it. And there you go. So I can use these controls. It's just like a VCR. I want to go all the way back now. The, the, uh, Ball is actually off the stage because I wanted it out of the way. Where did I get this video? I took it with my Pixel 2. Um, I have a meter stick in there because I have one. Uh, you need something to calibrate it, something with a known length. Uh, I'll show you how you calibrate it in a second. It can be you know, a 30 centimeter ruler or a one foot ruler. It can be something else that you know exactly how long it is. Doesn't matter as long as you have some way to calibrate the image. The longer it is, the better. So now that we have the video in here and running, we'll go to this little plus sign, well, product plus, and we get a bunch of controls. We've entered video analysis. So this little bracket is the calibration tool, which is now set for one meter. Convenient, because I'm using a meter stick. If you have something other than one meter, you click, and you see you can change this number to some portion of a meter, whatever works for you. So then I'm going to grab this, I'm going to drag it. Now we had a discussion about parallax, and 
that's an issue here, definitely, because the uh, the uh, lens of the uh, phone is centered on the meter stick. So there's going to be some perspective issues at either end, and that's going to affect our results, and that's something you should mention in your report. Again, I'm going to come over here. Ah, there we go. So now I have it calibrated. One meter in the image is one meter in capstone. This is the X and Y axis, and I'm going to set it up because uh, just for convenience sake. So you can see that my meter stick is not completely horizontal. That's okay. It's uh, good enough for today. So now I need my ball. So again, I have my controls down here to actually the VCR. This will run the movie, but I just want to advance it a couple of frames. So I can't do anything there because the calibration tool is in the way, but I can go here. So we want to use this one up here called Create Tracked Object. Now, there is an option here. There is something over here called Enable Auto Tracking. It'll give you a little... Um, a little bracketing thing that you can draw around the uh, the ball or whatever you use you can use whatever you want and um, it will auto track for you the problem is when I tried it it crashed my system several times so by all means go ahead uh, it's not hard to use it's not hard to figure out it's pretty self-explanatory uh, but save often because like I said crashes I'm going to show you the slow and torturous way because uh, it doesn't crash. So now I have a cursor. See, I have an arrow here, but now I have a cursor here. It says overlay. And I'm going to center this on the ball, left to right. And I'm going to keep it on the uh, x-axis just for alignment purposes. And I'm going to click. And it didn't see my click. There we go, click. And then I'm going to scoot along. That's one frame. Uh, that's not very much. I would go two. There, and I would go two more. And bang. See there, it jumped ahead of frame. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So you should do every other frame and you'll have like a dozen of these points. I don't need to do that, so I'm just going to skip along and do some other either end again. There we go. So, like I said, you do lots of points, either every frame or every other frame. And that part is over. So what we want to do is I want to make this smaller. And if you try and creep up in here, there, you can make this smaller. Make it about that size. Now, if you go over to displays again on under graph and drag graph out, you'll see a light blue uh, square here. When you're over it, it's even darker blue. That means you can drop the graph there. I drop it there and I have a graph. So here I have select measurements. I select my measurement. I have object one. And I want object one, number one, in meters. So I can click on this first little icon to get it all in the screen. I want to make it smaller so that I can, you know, kind of line it up with my other axis. There. Now if I run it, builds up. And of course, you'll have a lot more data points than I do. From this, you can find uh, the velocity. And once you have the velocity, you can click here and go to object one and click on VX for the velocity. And again, we'll have to line it up. 
You see, that's a little weird. I don't know what you're That's because I don't have enough points. So it looks weird because uh, the, the scaling here, right? If I go down to a more reasonable scale, it's not going to look weird. If you have a lot of points, this will be a nice line. And you can use that line to find the acceleration. So if this is horizontal and I'm moving um, in the x direction, why would there be a, uh, an, a, an acceleration? And the answer is that it depends on your object. If your object is relatively large and light, it will be more or less affected by um, drag from the air or friction or whatever. Uh, if it's small and dense, it will be less so, uh, and you'll have less. But you're always going to have some loss. There will always be some uh, uh, deceleration in this thing. It has to stop sometime. And that's it. Uh, so for your uh, report, uh, you'll take a screenshot of this and uh, put that in as the data. And for the analysis, you'll put in your uh, velocity and your acceleration. And you'll discuss, um, in the same way I did, how your ball is going to be uh, react with air resistance, and et cetera, et cetera. And that's it. It's a very simple exercise uh, just to get this software. So you have it, because we're going to need it again soon. And that's all for today.